You've asked, I've answered. Here are some of the top questions you've been asking ahead of game week 13. Let's get into it. Yo, listen up, Rue is stepping up the game. Where fantasy premier league runs in his veins. From transfers to captains, he's always on top. Guiding you through every game week nonstop. They say Rue got that sad up flow. Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show. Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe. If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe. Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Rue, and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through some of the questions I received on X on Twitter, um, coming from the community um, and answering them in the best possible way I can. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe and smash a like on this video too. Um, we'll start off with um, Harlan. So should I take out Harlan because of his flag? Um, I think the the most basic answer you're going to get is let's wait and see. Um, for me, though, I do think he will be all right. Yes, there is some concern that he did come off injured with an ankle injury um, in Norway for his country in the international break. But for me, after it's wait and see, I do think he will be all right. Um, he hasn't missed many games of injury for Man City, and, and I think he's made of some of tougher stuff than some other players. So for me, I do think he will play, but a crucial one is less wait and see. Um, his fixtures, though, are not the best, so I can, can definitely see if he is injured um, taking him out is a good is a good move. So Sp uh, Liverpool at home, then Spurs at home, then Villa away. Um, obviously, they've got Luton away and Palace at home, which are two really good fixtures, but then they do have a blank. So if he is missing, I'd say for three to ba basically three game weeks, maybe even four game weeks, um, then potentially I think it is worth taking him out. Um, another thing to note is um, although game week 13 and game week 14 are a week apart, um, game week 15 is in between game week 16, so it is a midweek game week. So that means if he is out for, say, three weeks, four weeks, he does miss that midweek game week too. So it's, it's an extra game week almost, if that makes sense. Um, so for me, missing three game weeks, let's say that was that is only two weeks um, between game week 13 and 15. Um, or, and for me, I think that is enough to take him out. Um, I think the money can be spread elsewhere. I think there are options out there. Um, it makes Alvarez a really, really good option. So if you do own Alvarez, I'd definitely be keeping him if Haaland does end up being injured for two to three game weeks. Um, I'd probably keep him anyway, but um, definitely now as he will be playing up front. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, I do think it is a wait and see. So the next one is um, the question we hope to all get right every week is... Best caption option for game week 13. So um, I've gone through the kind of usual suspects. So Haaland, Salah, Saka and Son. Originally, I was on Haaland. Um, I did think that Liverpool, although albeit they are one of the best defences in the league, I think Man City at home are a different animal um, for that reason that it was on Haaland. But now with his injury, even if he does end up being cleared fine, um, if, if City are maybe 1-2 or even 2-0 plus up, in the 70th minute, he might get taken off. I doubt it, though, against Liverpool, but you never know. Um, and there's always a, a chance of him kind of re-injuring himself in that game, especially with how demanding playing Liverpool is. Um, for now, though, so I'd, I'd, I'd actually rule out Haaland. He, I don't think he is the best captain option at all now, especially with that injury. Um, Salah, obviously, they play City, um, which is a tough, tough game. But we know Salah can do it against anyone. And we've seen him do it against City um, in the past. So, yes, he is an option. I just don't think he should be talked up in with some of the best options out there. For me, I think there are two better options than him, which we'll go on to now. So, Saka with Brentford away. Um, yes, not the easiest game, but... I think Arsenal have been looking really, really good away from home this season. Um, and for that reason, I think Saka does come out just ahead of Salah. Um, yes, the fixture is better. Yes, Salah is probably a better, well, is definitely a better player than than Saka in terms of goal threat, etc. Um, Saka, though, could be on penalties just like Salah with Odegaard. Um, who knows what, what's happening with Odegaard at the minute? He, he's missed the last few game weeks. So, um, for me, I do think Saka is a better option. Um, Son, though, is an option that I do really, really like. The longer it's getting in this game week. Yes, um, a lot of people know that he did come off injured in in the international break for Korea. Um, he was seen limping off. But at the end of the game, he was seen running and joking. 
Um, so I think he will be fine. It's probably just a precaution that he did come off. Um, with Villa at home, though, so again, not the easiest fixture. This this game week is a is a game week that is full of tough, tough fixtures. But I think at home, um, with how poor I'd say poor Villa have been away from home this season. At home, they've been unbelievable, but at home they've been pretty poor. Um, I do think Son is probably the best captain option, which is funny to say because at the start of the game week, I probably would have put him maybe maybe second at best, maybe even third. But now with Haaland coming off with a knock of ankle injury um, with also Jared Bowen, the latest news now that Jared Bowen has withdrew from the England squad with a knee injury, um, who would have been a really good captain option with Burnley away. Um, so with that news too, I do think Son is probably, funny enough, the best captain option this game week with the home fixture, with how many goals Villa are conceded away from home. Um, and, and in general, to be honest, with how good Spurs can be attacking wise, they're going to have a doggy back two on the left, which is going to be a big, big um, boost for them. Obviously, you no know, Madison, but I think uh, Benson Cole will play in that role now um, with Basuma injured as well. So I think the Spurs are going to have to kind of go for it in that game. And I can see that game being a 3 3, 4 3 Spurs, etc. Um, you could argue Salah. We know how good he can be, but I just think Man City are too, too strong. Um, at home. Yes, they did concede four against Chelsea, but that was away from home. At home, I can't see that happening. Um, for me, I'd go I'd go Son as the best captain option. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, though, as this week is open um, and it's going to be um, an interesting one to see how it goes. So next question is from uh, 07 Darkstar on Twitter. Um, so start out Nori or Matty Cash. So a lot of people are actually taking out Matty Cash this game week. Um, for me, it is because I think Spurs away are a tough fixture. I think Villa have been conceded, like I've just said, conceded a lot of goals um, this season. And for me, I, I just can't see a clean sheet coming um, f from them. They, they failed to keep a clean sheet in every game apart from uh, game week six and game week seven um, against Brighton and against Chelsea. Um, obviously, earlier on in the season, they did keep a clean sheet against Everton as well. But recently, it's only game week seven and eight that they've kept a clean sheet. Yes, we know Matty Cash can get goals and assists, but he's only got two goals and one assist. And then two goals came in the same game. Yes, it doesn't matter what game they come in. But if you kind of look at it as a whole on how many returns he's got per game, really, he's only returned in terms of attacking returns in two games this season. So I think Matty Cash is a is a good sale this week if you can. Obviously there's other fires to put out with the Bowen injury, with the potential Haaland injury. Um there are other fires to put out. But um I think if you can, I think selling Matty Cash this week could be a good move. Um but that doesn't mean I'd rather start him over out Nori. Yes, um Wolves have looked really, really good this season, to be honest with you. I think um They've they've shown that they can they can play football now, which is something that I would never associate with Wolves post um, Nuno Espirito Santo days. Um, they've always a tough kind of team, defensive, a bit average, but now under Gary O'Neill, I think they look really really good attacking wise. Um, but they look really good attacking wise, but defensively, I don't think it's there at all. Um, I think defensively they're awful. They've kept one clean sheet this season, which was against Everton in game week three. Um, other than that, they've conceded one or two goals. Yes, they don't normally concede three goals. Um, they have done this season, but they don't often do that. So you could argue that potentially there is always a chance for a clean sheet considering um, their goals conceded. Um, but for me, I wouldn't be bringing in um, a Wolves defender. But going back to your question, start Cash or Alt Nori. For me, with Fulham away against Spurs away, I'd always go for Fulham away. You could argue that Matty Cash does have a greater attacking threat, but you can't really be relying on that for me. I think Alt Nori can also have an attacking threat. He hasn't scored or assisted this season, but um, last season he did okay. He got a goal. Um, yes, not great, but the season before that is the definitely the key one. Um, he got a goal and an assist, and four assists, sorry. So some really, really good starts there I'd say also in game week in um season 2021 he got a goal and assist so he's not as attacking as Matty Cash but as I've said Matty Cash hasn't really performed this season attacking wise his numbers are a bit screwed by the fact that he scored two goals in one game 
Um, that's not going to happen every game week, is it? Um, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. For me, I would start out Nori. Um, but if you want to go for Matty Cash and try and go for the attacking returns, even just a slight attacking return um, favour, then, then potentially do that. But for me, I'd start out Nori. So next question um, comes in from um, FPL Jojos. Um, his question is, uh, James for Estupinan or Roll? Um, for me, I think that's actually a really good move. But I think the question all depends on who else you have starting defensively. If it's a Matty Cash with Spurs away, if it's a Simicas with City away, then potentially I think bringing in James is worth it. If you have three other good defenders, which I'm not sure is even possible this game week, then I'd probably say roll. But I think bringing in James is a is a good transfer. It's a massive differential. 4.3% own Reese James is. Uh, 5.3 million is a bargain for him, obviously, if he does perform. Um, it's just the thing of, can he stay fit? Um, but if you're willing to take that risk, and with Estupin and injured, who knows when he's going to come back. He did come back originally for a little bit, then he got injured again. I think he will be back next game week, maybe even the one after that. But really, you've waited this long, I think it's time to just jump onto Reese James if you want Reese James um, at that price. I think as soon as he gets a goal, as soon as he gets another assist, because he did get an assist last time out against Man City, but as soon as he gets another one, maybe even adds a clean sheet into that, I think his his price is going to fly. People are going to jump on him. So for me, I would say if you don't have a solid free to start in defence this game week, so it is Simicas, it is Cash, um, I can't think of anyone else, but that people with the tough games, then I'd probably bring in James. As although Newcastle away is a tough game, I think the fact that he's so so attacking does make up for that. Um, and we've seen Newcastle just lose to Bournemouth, so um, maybe they're not as solid as as we probably think. Um, for me, I would do that transfer rather than roll. So a question that I'm sure if you haven't thought of already, you probably will be thinking of this in a game week or two game weeks or three game weeks time. So what to do in blank game week 18. So there are a few options you could do in this game week. Um, we'll talk about one. So if you've used your wildcard already, um, you could potentially use your free hit in this game week. Yes, Brentford and Man City options um, are not, I'd say, ideal or key at the moment, but their fixtures leading up to game week 18 do look really, really good. And for that reason, and even post game week 18, they look really, really good. So for that reason, I do think playing a free hit could be an option if you kind of load up on Man City and on Brentford players. So Man City's fixtures pre uh, game week 18 is um, you've got two tough games, obviously, in the next two game weeks. So Liverpool at home, Spurs away. But after that, you've got Villa away, Luton away and Palace at home. Then after the blank, you've got Everton away, Sheffield United at home, Newcastle away, uh, Burnley at home. Then the fixtures still get good. Brentford away, Everton at home, um, Chelsea at home, Bournemouth away. Um, plus, they have a double game week in there somewhere. Potentially, this is going to be game week 19 to game week 21, potentially. So, But you know they're going to have one no matter what. So you'd rather have them in your team, I guess, than, than be looking for them when you need them. Um, so their fixtures are really, really good. In terms of Brentford, their fixtures are also really, really good. It's always the way, really. Um, when there's a team blanks, they always have good fixtures either side. Um, so Brentford, Arsenal at home, yes, tough this game week. But Luton at home in 14, Brighton, Sheffield United, and then Villa. Then they blank in 18. And then they have Wolves at home, Palace away, Forest at home. So really good fixtures either side. And they'll obviously have that double game week in there somewhere. Um, so that is a good reason to maybe play your free hit, load up on Brentford and City players, keep them for the blank. Obviously, you'll be free hitting, um, but you'll be loaded up for them really good fixtures. Maybe that's a Flecken. Um, maybe that's a, um, a Haaland, obviously, Alvarez. Uh, maybe that's in Buemo. So you can have four, four options. I'd say I not need to worry about that. Um, especially Flecken is a good differential as a lot of people that won't be playing the free hit will not be able to get Flecken as they might not have the cash to get two playing goalkeepers now that Turner has lost his place. So that is definitely an option. If you don't want to play your free hit, then for me, I think maybe one or two potential uh, Brentford or City options leading up to game week 18. Don't forget you can have maybe three 
um, or four, and then obviously have two transfer in game weeks 18 and take them out. But the only thing with that way is you're going to want them back for game week 19 because they do have really, really good fixtures. So you would have to kind of play the hokey cokey with them um, and do it that way. So it is a little bit trickier, but I'd probably go into game week 18 with maybe three City um, and Brentford players, maybe take out one for 18 and then bring one back for game week 19 and so on, um, or maybe even before their double. So that is another option, but you are playing hokey cokey with your players a little bit. Um, you could argue that maybe you don't need two City options with the amount of rotation they have, but we've seen Alvarez start every single game week this season. Obviously, Haaland, if he is fit, big if. If Haaland isn't fit, though, I think maybe um, you don't need to play your free hit in game week 18 as you will have um, no Haaland to, to have to get in. Obviously, Alvarez you can bench, Mbwemo you can bench, Flecken you can bench if you have if you didn't even need Flecken, probably, but you could bench and Buemo and Alvarez and kind of go with just them two. And then when it comes to the double game week, then bring in the City and, and Brentford players. Another option, which is probably what I'm going to do. So I still hold my wild card. So everyone that does hold their wild card, I think this is the best time to play it. So I will be um, getting my Brentford and City players in for their good run in pre game week 18, but then I'll be taking them out. So um, I'll probably end up with none or maybe one if I've got a lot of value held up in them. So for Alvarez, I jumped on him very, very early. So I probably won't be taking out Alvarez in game week 18. Um, so I'll probably have Alvarez on my bench, but that will probably be it. I'll probably take out Umbermo, take out Haaland as well. Um, and then game week 19 wildcard, I'd load up on Brentford and City, um, waiting for that double game week to come. What, ranking, um, Cashing in on their good fixtures post game week. 18 where a lot of people like I just said will have to take them out <laughs> again and then bring them back in so um, I kind of I guess save transfers as well and maybe save minus fours minus eights so um, if you do have a wild card I think playing it in game week 19 having maybe two two or three um, Brentford City options leading up to game week 18 taking two of them out having just one um, with on your bench and then wild card in in game week 19, I think that is probably the best option. Obviously, not everyone has their wild card, so potential free hit. For me, though, I do think it's used better on later on in the season where there is a double game week, where there is a bigger blank game week. So if you don't have them chips or you're not willing to use your free hit chip, then I'd probably go into game week 18 with maybe two, maybe three uh, City and Brentford options. Obviously, drop that down and make sure you have a good bench now and build towards having a good bench. So, you know, in game week 18, you can put out 11 players and you're happy with them 11 players. So um, I think the, the ideal advice is to build your bench for game week 18. So, you know, you don't have to stress about taking out Brentford and City players. You can afford to hold on to two, uh, maybe maybe one or two. Um, so, yeah, that's what, I'd, that's what I'd be doing. Um, but, yeah, stay tuned to the channel as I will be going through this a little bit in more depth, I guess, closer to game week 18. Let's get on to the next question. So the next question from Darkstar is start DRB or Palmer. So um, this is actually a tough, tough question as I think they both have tough, toughish, I'd say, fixtures. Um, I'd probably say Villa have the tougher fixture as Spurs away, I think, is a tougher fixture than Newcastle away at the moment. Um, but both have, have a lot of injuries. So you could argue that they're both not tough fixtures. Um, Cole Palmer though is on penalties which I think slightly edges him over DRB um, Cole Palmer like I said has been on great great, great form and um, he's now 5.2 million but he's scored four goals three assists this season um, goal against City goal and assist against Spurs goal against Arsenal goal and assist against Burnley assist against Fulham um, so he can score against anyone as well which is obviously seen in the returns against Spurs Arsenal um, sorry, Spurs, yeah, Spurs, Arsenal and Man City. Diaby, on the other hand, I think he's a bit hit and miss um, and he's not on penalties. So um, for me, it is a tricky one. Spurs away, who knows, that defence could be open. He, Diaby is a very, very quick player. He could be running in behind. Um, but for me, I don't think he's consistent enough. I know he's got three goals, six assists, but Cole Palmer wasn't starting nearly as much as Diaby early on in the season. So that, that I guess, information is a bit skewed. Um, yes, Diaby does look really, really good. And I'm a little bit worried about him getting in behind the Spurs defence, especially with that high line, especially with Eric Dyer and probably Ben Davis playing centre-backs. 
Um, but for me, I'd probably go for Cole Palmer just because of that penalty shout, just because I think Newcastle away is a slight better fixture at the moment than Spurs away. Um, but it is very, very close. So I think any decision you make could go either way. But for me, I'd probably start Cole Palmer in that game. If you have liked this video, please make sure you do smash a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, loads of content coming out, two to three videos every single game week, shorts, live streams, um, all of it. So, um, yeah, definitely make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell too. And, yeah, good luck for the game week, everyone.